There's always something happening in the space world, but every once in a while, something comes along that actually changes the direction of the entire industry. Recently, NASA's new administrator said something that could reshape how space programs are run for years to come, and in this video, we're going to break down exactly why it matters. Before we dive deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates. Ever since NASA got a new administrator in Jared Isaac Man, a lot of people have been asking the same question. What kind of changes is he actually going to bring? That question got an answer recently when Isaac Man publicly responded on social media to a claim that SLS and Orion are already proven systems and that Starship is the real problem slowing Artemis down. His response caught attention because instead of repeating the usual talking points, he focused on the actual technical problems. At the center of that discussion is Orion. Orion is not a new spacecraft going through early development issues. Its design work began in the early 2000s under NASA's previous exploration plans, meaning it has been in development for more than 20 years. Despite that long timeline, Orion has still never flown astronauts. Its only completed mission so far is Artemis 1 in 2022, which was uncrewed. That flight did not simply confirm that Orion is ready for human missions. After re-entry, engineers discovered serious heat shield behavior that did not match pre-flight predictions. The ablative layer experienced much higher than expected erosion. Trapped gases inside the heat shield caused cracking and material loss across more than 100 separate locations. This was not a minor surface issue. The heat shield is a crew-critical system, and unexpected material loss directly affects confidence margins for human flight. NASA investigated the problem in detail, but the response itself highlights the seriousness of the issue. Instead of replacing the heat shield for Artemis II, NASA chose to modify the re-entry trajectory to reduce heating loads. That means the spacecraft will fly a less aggressive profile to compensate for hardware uncertainty. As a result, Artemis II was delayed from September 2025 to April 2026. This delay happened after Orion's first flight, not before it and it shows that the system is still being managed around known risks rather than operating comfortably within design margins. Cost makes this situation even harder to justify. By 2024, NASA had already spent about $24.1 billion on Orion alone. That figure does not include SLS development, ground systems, or mission operations. After more than $24 billion and over 20 years of work, Orion still has not demonstrated a crewed mission and still carries unresolved performance concerns. SLS, the rocket meant to launch Orion, faces its own problems. While often described as reliable because it uses heritage hardware, that heritage comes with major limitations. The core stage uses RS-25 engines originally developed for the space shuttle. These engines are extremely complex and expensive, costing roughly $100 million each. SLS discards four of them on every launch, even though they were originally designed to be reused. Isaacman's background is a big reason why this appointment feels different from what NASA has done in the past. He didn't come up through government agencies, congressional committees, or long careers inside the aerospace bureaucracy. He built his wealth by starting a business at a young age, scaling it over time, and eventually becoming a billionaire through private industry. That already puts him in a very small group of NASA leaders who are financially independent and not tied to government contracts for their personal success. What makes that more important is how he approached spaceflight after reaching that level of wealth. Instead of treating space as a luxury experience, he treated it as a serious technical and operational challenge. He didn't just buy a seat and sit back. In 2021, he flew as the commander of a fully civilian orbital mission. That flight required real training, real responsibility, and direct involvement in mission planning and risk acceptance. Then in 2024, he flew again on a more complex mission that included the first non-government spacewalk. That wasn't a symbolic moment. It required new procedures, new suits, and new coordination between a private company and a human crew operating outside a spacecraft. 
Because of that, Isaac Mann understands spaceflight from the inside in a way most NASA administrators never have. He's experienced the risks personally, not just through reports and briefings. That puts him closer in mindset to people like Elon Musk than to traditional NASA leadership. Like Musk, he is a billionaire who is not motivated by government salary, political advancement, or institutional loyalty. He is motivated by outcomes, timelines, and whether systems actually work. It's also well known that Isaac Mann has a working relationship with Musk and SpaceX. Isaac Mann has flown on SpaceX vehicles, relied on SpaceX engineering teams, and publicly defended SpaceX. This matters because NASA's relationship with SpaceX has not always been smooth. Over the years, NASA and its regulators have repeatedly slowed or constrained SpaceX programs. After early Starship test flights, investigations paused progress for months at a time, even when failures occurred in uncrewed experimental vehicles designed specifically to test limits. From SpaceX's perspective, this has often looked like uneven treatment. Traditional programs like SLS and Orion can suffer cost overruns and multi-year delays without facing existential threats, while Starship test flights are halted for long periods after failures that were expected as part of development. With Isaac Mann in charge, many expect that SpaceX will have everything they want. Additionally, many people now expect the Boeing Starliner program to be canceled entirely. That expectation didn't come out of nowhere. NASA has already announced that it will no longer rely on Starliner for regular crew rotation missions. From the beginning, Starliner was supposed to be the safer, more traditional option. It was expected to fly astronauts before SpaceX's Crew Dragon. When NASA awarded its commercial crew contracts, Boeing received significantly more funding than SpaceX. Boeing was awarded about $4.2 billion for Starliner, while SpaceX received around $2.6 billion for Crew Dragon. Despite getting roughly $1.6 billion more, Boeing still fell far behind. The first major setback came with Starliner's initial uncrewed test flight in 2019. That mission was supposed to dock with the International Space Station, but it failed to do so. A timing error caused the spacecraft to burn too much fuel, leaving it unable to reach the station. Later investigations found additional software problems that could have caused serious issues during re-entry. The mission was labeled a failure, and Boeing had to absorb hundreds of millions of dollars in costs to fix the problems. Because of those issues, NASA required a second uncrewed test flight. That mission finally flew in 2022. While it did manage to dock with the ISS, it was still far from clean. Engineers identified problems with the spacecraft's propulsion system, including stuck oxidizer valves that had already delayed the launch by nearly a year. Even after docking, several thrusters underperformed, forcing teams to work around the issues in real time. The mission technically met minimum requirements, but it raised new concerns rather than restoring confidence. Then came the crewed flight, which turned into the most damaging chapter of the program. When Starliner finally launched with astronauts on board, the mission quickly ran into serious propulsion system problems. Multiple thrusters failed during flight, and engineers determined that the spacecraft was not safe to bring the crew back to Earth as planned. As a result, the astronauts were left aboard the ISS far longer than intended, ultimately spending about nine months in orbit. That situation was unprecedented for a vehicle that was supposed to be fully certified for crew transport. It forced NASA to rely even more heavily on SpaceX to bring astronauts home, the same company Starliner was meant to compete with. The optics were difficult to ignore. The system that received more money, took longer to develop, and followed a more conservative design approach, still failed its most important test. Financially, the damage has been massive. Boeing has already reported losses exceeding $1.5 billion related directly to Starliner, on top of the original fixed-price contract. This is why many now see Starliner as the next major program likely to be cut under new leadership. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.